Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Finish Friday. Um, as promised, we are gonna be starting our series on how to paint your kitchen cabinets. This could also include bathroom vanity. So as we're talking about this today and going over techniques as well as processes to be able to be successful, um, just know that you can use this on vanities or you can use it on some furniture as well. Um, I have some exciting news to be able to share with you and I've been leading up to this and a lot of people are now like win, win, win. So um, we are introducing a um, hundred colors that we have developed and this is a color card. I'm just going to show you. I want to be able to just show you the variances of and values of the blues, the grays. You know, we've been making um, our one step paint now for a little over five years and we have learned what colors people are wanting. We know that things are very much on trend. Blues are very much on trend this year, of course, and for 2020. So, but your grays, your deeper colors um, are also very much on trend. Colors very much on trend. So I really took um, some time and effort in being able to put this together. I am so excited about it and Here's the other thing. Not only do we have a hundred of our custom colors that are gonna be available uh, the end of October, look at this. We also have our own paint deck that we're going to have 1,100 colors available through Amy Howard at Home. What we're wanting to be able to do in this whole process is we're wanting to be able to offer you more and more options. As we are developing different products that are gonna be available for you, uh, whether it's for your front door or brushable lacquers or whatever, it's gonna give you a lot of options in order to be able to do that. So we are so excited um, about this and the ability to be able to make all these custom colors. So we'll be uh, working with our retailers and you'll know about with our boutique retailers, with our hardware stores, um, as far as their availability for colors but also um, here with Amy Howard at home. So, the, um, I have some of these here today just to be able to show you. These are some lighter colors and um, we're actually gonna be painting with one of them because, now these are the, the lighter values. We have a lot of darker, new, new colors that are much darker because to be quite honest with you, darker colors are very much on trend and a lot of you wanna be able to have bright colors uh, to be able to create different ombre effects, to be able to create different art pieces. We have all that for you, so I'm so excited. Um, but the other thing is too, we have improved our formula. Our new formula does have essential oils in it, but so it has a beautiful fragrance. We have changed the formula in the sense that it has a lot better coverage. So when you're working with lighter colors and they're going over dark woods, you're gonna be amazed at the coverage. We also have added some leveling agents while still keeping it no VOCs. That way you don't have to worry about the harsh chemicals. We've added leveling agents and an open drying time so you're gonna have a flatter finish. Um, so there's so many improvements. We are so excited about it. You, you know, and I want you to know, um, without getting too emotional, sometimes when I'll go to um, our Messenger uh, notes where you send messages through Messenger on Facebook or different posts, and especially in our before and after group. If you, are not, if you are watching this and you are not part of our before and after group, I just love these people. I love their spirit. I love their willingness to be able to help and to pour into one another. I love and am so proud of them enjoying the bragging rights because to be honest with you, painting your kitchen cabinets is a daunting task and it's really scary. Painting a piece of furniture can be really scary. I've had people come up to me at conventions and events and say, I need to paint my china cabinet, but if I mess this up, my husband will divorce me. <laughs> and I realize the pain and the intrepidation with that, it's scary. So that's why we take the time, like today, we're gonna go over a lot of technical things as far as painting so that way you can be successful in painting your kitchen cabinets or your vanities. So, um, but what I was saying, I, when I see these messages and when I, when I hear in your voice, I know when you're scared and I know when you're excited and I know when you are nervous about something, I take that to heart. And I think, then when I go around and I, and I see those orders come through, I think what an honor it is for me, for Amy Howard at Home, for Jean, for all of our people here 
um, and our little company to be a part of you making your home more beautiful. We are so honored to be a part of that. That's why I want you to be successful. I want you to have fun. I want you to be encouraged and I want you to be able to have definitely something to brag about. So I want you to be able to be on the before and after page so that way we can get those so that way we'll use them and then we'll give you credit on what you've done um, and share with the world so that way they can uh, feel empowered to do that as well. So today we're going to be going over kitchen cabinets, of course, bathroom vanities, and it can go over onto furniture as well. I have some examples here that are some fun before and afters that we have been painting here in the test kitchen this week that I thought would be a lot of fun to let you see that before and after. While we do split screens and you can see it, it's like, oh, okay, it's one thing to really see a piece of furniture that itself has been cut in half. Um, and so what we did, these are pieces that we have uh, bought. And you know, of course, the best place to be able to go is tag sales and garage sales or go shopping in your attic. Nothing is more fun and enjoy the bragging rights than getting something on the side of the road. Um, you know, one thing, and I joke about this a lot of times, um, you'll never tell anybody, well, um, how much you paid for something. We just don't do that. It's like a faux pas, but you have no problem, and I don't either, being able, if you got something for $5 on a porch pickup, or for $10, or especially if it was free, that's the first thing we do, is like, oh, girl, I got that for free. And then they're able to see that they can do it as well. So look at this cute little nightstand. I'm gonna lean this forward to let you kind of see. It was pretty bad. Um, if you are starting on a piece of furniture and the veneer has popped off that shellac on the top that it's been sealed with, you do need to lightly sand that down. Um, the one step paint will adhere to it, but I just wanna make sure you've got a nice smooth finish. But I thought it would be fun to just show you, look at the half and half. So a lot of people, they still get confused. They're like, okay, wait, are you telling me that I don't have to sand it, I don't have to strip it, I don't have to prime it before I paint, that's right. You do need to make sure that you clean it first because whatever cleaners have been worked on this over a period of time, it can act as a surfactant. It means that it will act as a barrier that will not allow it to bond and we wanna clean that with a clean slate first. That's the only thing you have to do. But notice the thing too, we painted the hardware if you don't want to invest in new hardware and you want to be able to paint the existing, that's no problem. Clean it because the one-step paint will go on metal as well. So I just thought this would be really fun to be able to show you uh, the before and after on this. We use some of our Maker Studio transfers on this and we're working on this to kind of show you on the side how cute that is. Um, you can take your painting to the next level um, as far as doing artwork and it's easy. You don't have to have any artistic skill. But it's really fun to be able to use the one-step paint to be able to be the base for this. Here's another little piece that we've done. Again, we did a half and half. It's great to be able to let you see what it can look like. But um, this is a veneer too. A lot of the pieces that you're going to be painting, they're not real wood. They're probably particle board. And they have some type of heated plastic material on it that looks like wood, but it's really not. Um, and these, the, the one-step paint is perfect to be able to go on that and rescue and restore it. Here you see we actually painted the knobs as well and came back and added a little bit of size and gold leaf. So that's why I try to encourage you to be able to learn. Watch my videos where I've done gilding. Um, this is this is a ink transfer also from a Maker Studio, my sister company that we put on top of this. I just thought it was a cute transformation to be able to show you um, the before and after. So um, it's all about inspiring educating and being able to give you ideas of how you can turn around and do that in your own kitchen or um, on your own furniture. So we're going to go in more now into the technical aspect of uh, painting your kitchen cabinets, what the paint will do, um, how you need to, to prep for it. And I have some doors here and I'm going to encourage you. Now, of course, this is the door off of my little piece. I'm going to take this hardware off and put a basket in here. A lot of times when you're doing a piece of furniture, don't always think that it has to stay the way it is that you bought it. And these doors seem a little um, old to me and I wanted to be able to take it off. I think a, ba a basket will take it up and make it look a little bit more on trend. But it's great to be able to show you as far as this surface being able to paint it. The other thing is, if you have kitchen cabinet doors, we went and bought these at Habitat this morning. The Habitat Restore or Goodwill, as you'll see the price on here, they're about $2. Now, if I buy a lot of them, I will tell you, I will go to the salesperson and I'll ask, can I get these for a dollar? 
like if I'm buying eight or nine of them, and usually they'll give them to me for a dollar. This is what I want you to use to be able to test the color. Um, several of you, if you're trying to decide between maybe a good man is hard to find or a light color, here, this is going to push you over the edge. It's going to be so fun. We're going to be doing examples of painting furniture like this all the time, so you're going to be able to see it. I've got some definite favorites that I am real excited about doing in my own home. Um, but I want you to paint that color, the one-step color on this cabinet. I want you to be able to play with what kind of wax to put on it, and I want you to be able to experiment and see what it looks like. Put it in your kitchen in the morning. I want you to see what it looks like with the morning sun at night to be able to make sure it's not too dark. I want you to be very, very happy with it. Paint this as a sample cabinet first before painting your actual kitchen cabinets. One thing I did want to point out, see the grain in this? This is, um, this is an oak cabinet that is, um, it actually has kind of a faux grain to it, but it is an indentation. The one-step paint is not going to fill in that grain. When you paint it, you're still going to see the grain. So just know that. I don't have a problem with grain showing through on cabinets um, at all. A lot of people that might bother, but if this is the finish that's on your cabinets, that grain is gonna show up afterwards. So go to Habitat Restore or Goodwill, get some cabinet doors for a dollar, two dollars, and that's what I want you to experiment on. Now, y'all know that I have, um, I have a good friend and a partner in crime and um, we have been painting furniture for many, many years together. But he is, um, he's an engineer, and a lot of people don't know he's really smart. He's really much smarter than me. Um, he was in the aeronautic space program at FIT, um, and now I have him painting furniture with me. So um, I'm gonna invite my husband, Gene, to come over here and talk to us about the technical aspect of painting kitchen cabinets. So welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for picking me up at the work release. I appreciate that. Good so, morning. <laughs> that's the only bad thing. We don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> Before we went live, he had a he had an oven, <laughs> he had an oven mitt on his hand, and I said, "What is that for? What did you say?" So I can be your handyman. <laughs> oh, it's hot in here. Okay. It really is hot. Okay, so um, so the other thing is too, we're, if you are catching us live, um, we're teaching you today how to be able to paint your kitchen cabinets, um, more the technical aspect of it, and of course this can go with furniture and bathroom vanities as well. So if you are catching us live, please ask us questions. We want to we want to answer them for you because there are no dumb questions, and questions is how we all learn. So that way we're able to answer them. Um, and the gals here with Instagram and Facebook are going to stop us, and then that way we can answer them live. So, um, are we okay on questions thus far? How can we get your color chart? Well, we are going to have it on the website uh, the moment they come back from the printer. We will have the, um, I love the paint bags. We're actually going to be having some before and after contests that you're going to be able to win these. Um, as well as um, these will be printed and will be going out um, in our orders. So we'll, we'll have it on there. You'll be able to buy it, I promise. But we're looking at the end of October. So When will the new formula be available in ACE? More like the middle to the end of October, right? The new formulas will be starting November. November 1? For ACE. Okay. Yes. yes. And how do we get to the before and after page? So you can go to Facebook and it will say Amy Howard Home before and after group and then that way you can join. I promise. We have 3,000 of the most amazing uh, do-it-yourselfers and they are just incredibly gracious in, in um, sharing their gifts too and really um, supporting one another. Mm -hmm. All right, so Jean, take us through painting our kitchen cabinets. It's a daunting task. Mm -hmm. How much paint do we know to get? What do we do? How do we take us all through that? Oh, using the one-step paint, the ports will cover about 100 to 120 square feet of surface area, and that's one coat. Most times it'll take at least two coats of the one-step paint for coverage. First thing you wanna do is remove the doors and drawers from your cabinets because it's easier to paint them on a flat surface as opposed to them being on a vertical surface. Uh, when you do remove them, you want to number those because most likely all of your hinges are adjustable on the doors 
and you don't want to have to be readjusting the hinges for uh, making sure the doors are setting level. So when you remove the hinges, put some masking tape and mark them uh, where they came from, as well as the door. Mark the door on the inside where you move the hinge to tell you where that door was located. Same with the drawers. When you take a drawer and you remove the drawer, on the back side of the drawer, mark it with some masking tape where that drawer was located. So again, in case there was any adjustments made for it to fit in that exact location. So once you do that, the next thing you want to do is you want to use the clean slate in order to clean the cabinets because there's probably wax, grease, uh, my grandmother used to smoke in the kitchen, uh, so you got uh, tobacco <laughs> smoke and everything Did on there. Did she really or she you really, no, really Okay, is. I have a question. A lot of people will say uh, they use a product like TSP or mm -hmm. tell us yeah. Tell us the difference between the clean slate and something like a TSP. A lot of your degreasers like TSP has surfactants in it and the surfactants will actually act as a Teflon that will prevent the adhesion of the paint. And our clean slate was formulated, it is a refinisher's grade furniture cleaner so it removes waxes, silicones, anything that would prevent the maximum adhesion of the paint on the surface. So this is not just a degreaser, this is a refinisher's grade clean furniture cleaners before they would refinish a piece of furniture. And that's the how this will remove all of that and give you the best adhesion. And I'll also tell you, I, I'm really bad about putting my makeup on, on my side of the car and Jean gets really mad. This takes makeup off of uh, those mirror flip things. And the sun visor. The sun visor. And, the mm -hmm. and um, it's, you can use it for a whole lot of different things. I mean, we, we keep it under our kitchen cabinets with, um, with our other cleaners and things just because we can use it when there's wax on the floor or a lot, we have three dogs, so we just use it for a lot of things. So anyway, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, this has not been cleaned. We it's got this from the Restore, the Habitat for Humanity Restore, so um, we do need to clean it. Are we good on questions? Okay. Um, will the old formula no longer be available once the new formula is in store? Um, we have a lot of the old formula, you know, in the store. It's still great. It's still there, but it will be... Um, it will be a transition. We will period. transition, yes. And when can we purchase your color chart? We will get those out and have those available on the website the end of October. Yes. Adams asks, if I'm layering colors, I remember you said going from light underneath to dark on top is a better transition. Yes. With the new formula, will it be easier to go from dark to light using cracked patina? Yes, so um, now remember, I don't want to get off too much on cracked patina, but I want to ask this question. So the question is, transitioning um, as far as going from dark to light. Um, it, remember with cracked patina, if you want to be able to have a cracked finish, the cracked patina is the Oreo cookie center. So it always has to be in between two colors. So that way you'll want to have your one step first, then your cracked patina, and then a color on top and they're sandwiched. We have a whole other video for that. But there, with our new formula, there is a lot better coverage. Um, it's a lot easier, so that way if you're transitioning from like a cherry and you want to go to Bauhaus Buff or a light color, um, your coverage is going to be a lot, a lot more. So, yes, it'll make it a lot easier. Okay. This particular cabinet door is um, of what's called a vinyl clad, where this is literally a sheet of vinyl that's been pressed on to the uh, probably a particle board uh, frame. And you can see just in the cleaning how we got a lot of the wax and grease and dirt uh, from that door. So once I've cleaned it, I do want to turn my rag so that I'm not just moving the grease and wax and dirt around. I want to just kind of flip that so that I'm actually picking it up and then come back with the dry rag just to get the residue off. So there's not any rinsing or uh, washing down. Once you've cleaned it, just go back with a, a dry rag and just get the residue off. 
and because it is a solvent base, the solvents will flash off or dry within minutes and you'll be ready to paint. So about how long do I need to let this dry after I've done the clean slate? You know, five, 10 minutes. You okay. know, once I've wiped it down, just to be on the safe side, give it five, 10 minutes, like I said. And we're gonna go right into painting though with this. So the other thing is, um, you know, that we talk about, there is some odor to, be, to the clean slate because mm -hmm. we, we pride ourselves in the fact that um, with the one step paint that there are no VOCs, there's no chemicals mm -hmm. that you have to worry about. The, there are some chemicals to the clean slate. There so, is a solvent base. Yeah, so should someone wear any rubber gloves or anything like that and use it? I know we normally don't. You can, I mean, if, if just if you want just somebody who wants to give some protection to their skin, they can use some of those uh, rubber gloves for dishwashing, um, anything like that. It won't hurt not to have them, but we recommend that uh, from a safety standpoint to wear rubber gloves. Use it in a ventilated area. Again, it's solvent based, so we want it ventilated. You don't want to be in a closed area whenever you're using solvents. So the other thing that we want to go over is the fact that we do have these chip brushes. Our chip brushes are twice as thick as the, as the average chip brush, but we recommend using this for your light wax and your dark wax and even your liming wax. If you're gonna be painting kitchen cabinets, you wanna be able to work with a synthetic brush that has a microfiber um, to it because it's gonna have a tendency to lay the paint down a lot flatter. Uh, so we recommend in using the one step paint not to use the chip brush uh, for that, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Do you have anything to add to that? No, this, the synthetic brushes will give you a smoother finish uh, it'll help in reducing the brush marks in the paint. So this is a, 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 the, a better brush to use. Uh, we also recommend that when you're painting your cabinets, if you're using a brush, use a brush for everything. If you use a roller, use mm -hmm. a roller for everything, everything because there's a difference in the texture so that if you brush the door and drawers and you come back and roll the facings of the cabinet, you're gonna see a difference in the texture. So we want it to all be uniform. Good word. Um, okay, so can we go on, uh, this is one of our new colors called Lake Como. Does that bring back any memories? It does. I have to tell y'all this. So we, um, we had an opportunity years ago, we were at Lake Como in Italy, and um, oh, you should Google it, the pictures are absolutely divine. But Jean rented a boat, a Chris Craft, like an old wooden boat, and um, we took a boat ride around um, Lake Como. It was dreamy. It was, he really scored that day as far as his romantic meter was way up here. It was absolutely incredible. So just look, thinking of the blue, the blue sky, the lake, the water, I thought in doing this color that Lake Como mm -hmm. would be a great, great name for that mm -hmm. paint. Yes. Um, are you guys doing a master class in the fall? No, yes, we are. So if you've gotten information, we have um, been running some ads as far as my old world finishing course. Many of you know that I, um, we were furniture manufacturers for many years and our most desirable finishes um, on our furniture that people would buy that were most sought after and that were the most expensive, we charge the most on them is in my old world finishing course. If you love painting furniture, if you do it to make extra money or you do it for yourself, that old world finishing course will pay for itself in the first piece that you do. So um, I spent many, many months on creating that, writing the book, uh, it has 10 modules in it. And so what we are gonna be offering is we will have an, a master's finishing course where you can come here to Memphis for three days and I'm gonna be training you in my studio because I want you to be able to have finishes to be able to show clients or even to be able to learn. Maybe you've thought about doing this and you want to build a business. I'm going to be uh, mentoring you in that process. So um, the other thing with this, and I didn't mean to get off on that, but in the old world finishing course, I'm actually mentoring you through the finishing process that we will have Zooms um, every month. So if that's something that you've been interested in, you ought to check it out. But uh, yes, we are offering that. So, What is the new one step paint? The new One Step Paint, it just has essential oils, it has better coverage, um, it has more dry time, it'll lay down flatter, and it has a hundred colors. Better flow out. 
and um, and then we will have our paint decks too that will be able to mix 1100 colors so how often do you turn your paint pots over to blend the one-step paints I just shake them up really good mm -hmm. shake and stir shake stirring, and stir stirring is really important we'll usually use a whisk yeah, on the older ones because it just stirs it much quicker. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's go over um, the technique as far as painting. Mm -hmm. Take it. Walk us through that. What I like to do when I'm painting this, if you'll give me four of those. Four pots. Oh, okay. What I'm going to do is create a little work table. Love that. Where my piece is now up, so when I paint around the edge, it's not painting my my work table and so that just takes it up off the ground and then I can get all the way around the edge and then with the brush I'm gonna go in the direction in this case I don't have wood grain to follow so but I'm gonna follow the length as opposed to the shorter width so I'm gonna be painting in this direction so if you have wood grain you always want to be painting with you want the grain. To follow the grain. And the nice thing about this is um, you can use the one step paint on top of formica, which this is a type of formica material. Mm -hmm. When we say that, guys, there's a lot of furniture that's formica too. So I want to, I want you to be able to talk about the technical aspect as you're painting. And I can't see that front edge, so you'll have to tell me if I'm missing spots or not, but but you can just see I'm painting one nice long stroke I'm gonna come in if I do this quick enough there's not gonna be much transition between the directions that I'm going and you see I'm working I'm I'm not just continually brushing and brushing and brushing in the same spot but instead I get my brush stroke in when I see I've got coverage and it's much much better to do two light coats mm -hmm. than one heavy coat mm -hmm. because if you put this on too heavy it'll have a tendency to crack and to drag mm -hmm. yeah you've got a little bit up here that you kind of missed i know it's, it's kind of hard for you yes, to be able I to see, see that um we'll just we'll help but i you know i will point that. out look at the coverage of this over this white melamine uh, cabinet from was it the 80s that melamine was so big mm -hmm, 80s 90s 80s 90s so that way a lot of people that have white kitchen cabinets that are melamine they won't color people that have oak cabinets they want white cabinets so we're trying to cover the bases um, you know for a lot of different people but being able to see how he's doing this now we also have a brush that is great to be able to use in the crevices like this it's actually a triangle so that allows you to be able to get in uh, to the crevices, even on a, on a piece of furniture. Um, even like if you're painting window panes, we have a square brush. So Gene's not using that because he's kind of a master painter here. He's like <laughs> lickety split. But, um, but can you talk a little bit about the technical aspect as you're doing it, how you're feathering? Mm -hmm. Notice like on these edges, if I come to the outside edge and pull, it's gonna puddle. So I'm coming off the edge instead of onto the edge so that I'm not creating that puddle. Off the edge instead of on the edge. Mm -hmm. And so once I've got the coverage, now I'm just going back and smoothing that out of any stop-start transitions. Now when you do that, is that a much lighter touch? Mm -hmm. When you're feathering that, it's very little pressure. Okay, so guys, this, this is pretty incredible. This is one coat. Remember we mm -hmm. talk about one step. It's not one coat, it's one step. So after you've cleaned it, then that way you can come back. Jean's using the wedge brush uh, to be able to apply this. Now, this is gonna need to dry how long? You know, the best is let it dry an hour. Okay. Um, I Notice, usually say 30, it's gonna be dry in 30 minutes. You know, but if it's dry to the touch, Another way you can tell when you touch it, if it's not dry enough, it's going to be cool. It's going to be, a, it's cool to the touch. So you want it to get to the point that it's room temperature and then it's ready for the second coat. Notice too, there be some areas that I didn't get total cover and that's okay. Yes, totally. I'm not trying to see how much paint I can get on the first one. I just want a nice, smooth, uniform coat on that first coat. 
The second coat, we call it the money coat. That's the one that's gonna get my full coverage. Uh, it'll be put on. Again, I'll feather that and smooth that out. So you can't, with uh, a water-based paint, especially the chalk-based paints, uh, it's almost impossible to eliminate all brush marks. Even with latex paints that's got all the synthetics and VOCs and artificial ingredients, mm -hmm. uh, you'll still get some, some brush marks in there. These have been, th there's a lot less on here now mm -hmm, though, mm -hmm. because of the dry time and how mm -hmm, it's laying mm -hmm, down. Mm -hmm. um, yes? Is there any benefit in using the clean slate as a regular cleaner for kitchen cabinets or only before painting or refinishing? Also, would a clean slate be the best prep for painting paneling? Yes, yes and yes. Yes both, and both, yes. Both of those. Because I'm going to tell you a lot of times, and my mother did, we had that old paneling in our den, and she would put liquid gold in the 70s. Yes, I'm telling how old I am. Um, she would use liquid gold on our paneling in the 70s, and that is an oily residue that's been soaked mm. down into that mm. fake veneer. It would be great to clean it. Um, with a clean slate before you paint it. And I would really suggest if you're painting paneling uh, with the one-step paint, um, make sure that you use a foam roller. That will be better um, as far as getting yeah. a really good application. Yeah, if you're doing big, large surfaces, a roller's great. Or also a sprayer. Uh, of course, a sprayer is a little different. You've got to do a lot of covering of plastic mm -hmm. to prevent overspray on the mm -hmm. floor, the ceiling. Um, so it takes a little bit more practice with that, but it is much faster. Mm -hmm. Will the new One Step be more expensive? No, it will not. And where can we buy the paintbrush you are using now? Um, it's on our website. So that way you can go to the website and you'll see it on there. Love these questions. Mm -hmm. So we're going to let this dry down. We're going to come back. We're going to put on a second coat. Gene wants us to wait an hour. Um, it's going to be dry fairly quickly. Um, and he wants it just to be able to cure. As you're working your way around the cabinets, um, you'll you'll definitely, by the time you paint all the kitchen cabinets, th then they'll probably be dry. Well, maybe about. But something we've also had the questions, can I use a hair dryer to speed it up? Yes, you can, but the caveat is put it on the low heat, mm -hmm. not on high heat, meaning temperature-wise, mm -hmm. uh, and be sure you stay far enough back that you're not putting so much heat on the paint that the paint will crack. Uh, that can happen. So again, you can put the fan on high, heat on low, and just be sure you're back far enough. So that way it does help dry it quicker. So, and here's the other thing, as far as coming back, remember with our one step paint, it's so great. You can use it on walls. You can use it on furniture. You don't have to seal it. There are other chalk based companies out there that if you don't seal it, it'll wipe off. Ours is not that way. It's solid, it's not going anywhere. And you can use it on brick. We love using the one-step paint on brick. I know we're talking about kitchen cabinets today, but most other paints, when you're painting brick, they look plastic mm -hmm. because there's plastics in mm -hmm. it. You mm -hmm. want something that has a beautiful matte um, finish to it, and that's why the one-step paint is so beautiful on brick. Mm -hmm. um, in our before and after group, you'll see how people have used it on the outside of homes but I do like it definitely on brick surrounds. You can use it on um, walls as well. Definitely a big trend, 2020 guys, is very matte walls. It has a depth of finish to it. You can clean this. If you wanna come back with soap and water, if you wanna come back with um, Windex or whatever, mm -hmm. you can clean these. Mm -hmm. So you can have a matte finish. A lot of people are like, well I get spaghetti sauce, I have children. It's okay, you can, you can very easily clean this. Or you can come back with the Mind Your Own Beeswax, which is squeezable. You can use our wax pucks. Um, if you want to be able to have a white glazed look to it, you can use the Ceruzine wax. So um, we have a lot of other videos on that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's located up to you. On yes, located on YouTube. So you can go on there. It's really scary when I meet people that are like, I went on a binge watching all your videos. I'm like, sorry. But if that helps you understand kind of the process, we want you to be able to be really successful mm -hmm. um, in what it is that you're doing. Yes, Instagram. Now, are we good? Okay. All right, guys. So we wanted to just kind of go over some of the technical things today and um, allow you to be able to see that it's so, so easy to be able to paint your kitchen cabinets, your vanities, 
or your furniture that you're going to be rescuing and restoring. I promise it's so easy, but I want you to test it out. Go to Habitat Restore or go to Goodwill, buy a cabinet door for one or two dollars and then paint it on and be able to experiment so that way we want you to be really successful. Don't forget to join our before and after group because it's time for you to enjoy the bragging rights. Have a great weekend. See you at the estate sales. Have a good weekend.